Today we're going to look at what you can do, some very practical strategies to help you fix the problem when your students encounter reading issues in your content area. Oftentimes our students don't really care whether reading makes sense or not. When it doesn't, they just actually quit. And what you'll come to realize is that most struggling readers aren't going to love reading. And they're sure not going to love it enough to choose to do it in their leisure time. But electing to quit when a text becomes too difficult is a choice that could have some very serious consequences. But automatically abandoning a text just because it doesn't make sense, that means that life is going to get that much harder for a struggling reader. <clears throat> Everyone in your classes is going to know how to reread. It's seldom that they're actually going to do it because slow readers are, it's going to take too long for them to reread. For others, they're going to say that it, they're lucky to just get through an assignment once, let alone read it again. And when you consider that offering the suggestion of having those students ask for help, what will happen is when you ask them from whom would they get help, they'll say the teacher. But most of the time, your students are going to be expected to read at home, and that's not an option to just ask the teacher. And another option that sometimes teachers throw out is to think harder. And thinking harder is just not going to get a struggling reader uh, to have better comprehension. So here are some actual strategies to help fix confusion. And they're listed here. We'll go through each one and talk about it individually. But this is a list of strategies that you can use with your students at different times and in different situations to help them when they are having confusion. So making connections between the text and your life, your knowledge, or another text. Sometimes a reader has information about a topic in her head that just isn't being used. When, when we work to make that connection, this background knowledge can be a really powerful tool and it helps the reader connect to meaning. Good readers know that when they use knowledge to make a connection, it helps them understand their reading better. So they use memories or personal experiences, information about the topic that they're reading about. Uh, they may uh, use some information about the author's style or the way the text is organized. And that helps them better visualize or predict or ask questions. When they start doing that, they can do inferences and stay focused, and then they remember what they've read. Good readers anticipate what's coming next. Based on what they've already read, readers expect certain new events to occur. When, event doesn't make, when an event doesn't make a prediction, readers rethink and revise their thinking. More important, they are alerted to possible confusion. Sometimes misreading throws off a prediction. When readers predict, they are aware meaning is breaking down. Instead of ignoring an inc incorrect prediction, they get back into the action to make a new guess. And predicting jolts readers back on track. It keeps them involved so they aren't surprised by incorrect conclusions about what they're reading. This one is really pretty easy and oftentimes students ignore it, but it's the most useful of the fix-up strategies. Good readers ponder what they have read. They connect newly acquired knowledge with information they already have, and stopping and thinking gives readers time to synthesize new information. This think time allows opportunity to ask questions, visualize, and determine what's important in the text. <clears throat> Good readers ask themselves questions when they read. They're curious about the answers, and then they continue reading. Sometimes these questions are answered directly in the text, and the meaning is clarified right then. Typically, clarifying questions are about 
something particular in the text, a who, what, when, or where type of question. <clears throat> Other times, answers to questions aren't found in the text, and those are questions they have to think about because they don't have simple answers. Our students are going to have to ask how and why, and in those cases, the reader's forced to go beyond the words to find the answer, and they have to begin to draw an inference, inference and or possibly they go to another source. Struggling readers sometimes expect to find all the answers in their text. These readers often miss test questions like, what's the best title What's for this piece? What's the main idea? Or asking questions that delve a little deeper into the concepts. They don't realize that the answers can be found by using clues from the text and their background knowledge to draw an inference because an inference is that connection between what's in the text and their background knowledge. Oftentimes, secondary students think that this, this is just a waste of time if it's not directly in the text. So readers who ask questions and know where the answers are to their question, where their questions can be found are more likely to have a better read. They also can understand how to infer and they can draw conclusions and have better comprehension of their text. Writing down what, what you think about what you've read allows our students to clarify their thinking. It's an opportunity to reflect. Readers better understand their reading when they have written about it. The writing may just be a summary or it may be a response or reflection, but sometimes just jotting down a few notes will actually clarify reading the reading for the student. When meaning breaks down, good readers consciously create images in their heads to help them make sense of what the words are saying. They basically use movies, television, and life to help them picture what's happening. When a reader can visualize what's happening, comprehension then improves. Now, secondary students are bombarded with visual images. Actually, all students, all people are bombarded with visual images. These images can help readers make a video in their head because if they can see it, they often can understand it. Keywords, bold print, italicized words, capital letters, punctuation, all of these are examples of print conven conventions that can enhance understanding. Conventions of the print help the author convey intent. They help the reader determine what's important and what's valued in the text. Conventions of print give the reader insight and it helps them understand what to zero in on. Poor readers often ignore these conventions because they're unaware of their functions. So pointing out these conventions to your students will not only improve reading comprehension with struggling readers, but it also helps students use these same conventions in their own writing when they want to convey meaning. Taking a moment to retell what has been read helps the reader reflect. It activates background knowledge and it also provides a check on whether the reader is actually understanding what's been read. When readers can't retell what is read, it's an indication that their minds were wondering, wandering while they were reading or that they have confusion. So just simply asking, what have I just read, refreshes the reader's memory and prepares her to read the next part. This is a useful strategy when returning to reading after some time has passed. Students frequently read something and then don't pick the material back up again for several days. And teaching students to quickly recall what they've already read before starting new material can save them time and anxiety with confusion. Readers who don't control or don't recall what they've read before beginning new text, end up doing it while they're reading the new material, and then that makes them not pay attention to details in the new material. 
when meaning breaks down, readers can stop and decide whether there's something in the text they can reread that'll help them understand it better. Since this is the one strategy most readers know automatically, it needs little explaining. An important aspect to remember is that a student doesn't have to reread everything for the strategy to be helpful. Sometimes rereading portions of the text, even just a sentence or just a word, can enhance comprehension. Struggling readers tend to think rereading means they have to reread everything, so clarify this for your students. So different kinds of texts have different types of organizational patterns and recognizing how a piece is organized helps readers locate information more quickly. Some struggling readers believe that they have to read everything from cover to cover. And taking time to explain how a text is organized helps students figure out where the information is found. It helps them determine what is important. When meaning breaks down, readers can stop and think about how the text is organized and see whether there is something in the pattern that helps them understand what the meaning is. So giving your students an outline of how the text is organized uh, and how to focus on important parts is really helpful to them. Contrary to what struggling readers think, good readers don't read everything really quickly. They adjust their, read, their rate to meet the demands of the task. Many secondary students read textbooks at the same rate that they read their favorite magazine. Now, good readers slow down when something is difficult or unfamiliar. They realize that in order to make meaning, their rate has to decrease. They also know it's okay to read faster when something is familiar or boring. Reading faster sometimes forces the brain to stay engaged. So good readers select a rate based on the difficulty of the material, also their purpose in reading it, and how familiar they are with the topic. Now keep in mind that not all of these fix-up strategies will work all the time. Some work better than others depending on the nature of the confusion and it's important that your students know that when good readers get stuck they don't quit. They just stop and decide what will help them solve their confusion. The more strategies readers have for helping confusion for comprehension, the more likely they are to stick with their reading. So students need opportunities to select these types of fix-up strategies based on the nature of the problem. Not every fix-up strategy works in every instance. Keep that in mind. Before the students can use these strategies flexibly and automatically, they need to recognize confusion and analyze what's causing the confusion. Only then can they choose what they need to use to repair it. Readers who encounter an unknown word know that rereading the word over and over again isn't going to help. They may ask someone the meaning or look the word up in the dictionary. Circumstances dictate which fix-up strategy to use. If the reader is alone, she can't ask for help. If she doesn't have a dictionary or she's too lazy to look up the word, she has to find another way to help herself. Perhaps she reads around the unknown word and tries to make a logical guess about its meaning. She can decide that the word is unimportant and just skip it. She can conclude that unless the word reappears, it isn't necessary to the understanding of the piece. If the word does appear, she may decide it is important and she can flag it and talk to her teacher about it the next day. A reader who's aware of all of these options can attack comp comprehension when it is a problem. So what are some ways that this works? Remember that you can share material you find confusing and remind your students that even good readers get confused when they read. Demonstrate what you do when you recognize a problem in your comprehension. Show students how to flag interruptions in their meaning. Try reading aloud a difficult piece of text and have students 
record the strategy that you could use to regain meaning. Good readers isolate confusion and they make a plan to repair it. They know if they continue reading without doing anything to help themselves, their confusion will get worse. Another suggestion you can do is give a list of these strategies to your students. Ask them to use the strategies while they're reading their assignments and ask them to try at least one fix-up strategy before they come to you and you help them clear up their confusion. Remember, good readers don't quit when they become confused. They use fix-up strategies to help them repair this confusion. And a third suggestion is to demonstrate how Listening to the voices in your head helps you know which fix-up strategy to use. Let your students know that not every fix-up strategy works in every situation. Tell them it's okay to abandon one strategy if it's not helping and go to another. Good readers use these strategies in a flexible way. When one doesn't work, they simply try another.